not even in the actual museum yet, but I saw this over here. It says Blue Star Memorial. I'm trying to figure out what this is for. This is a tribute to the armed forces that have defended the United States of America. Sponsored by Arizona Federation of Garden Clubs. It's pretty, pretty nice Superstition Mountain Museum. We've got a little bench over here. It's like a bridge. It looks like it takes you over here to another spot. Let's go take a look and see what's over here. we got a nice little... Looks like we got some rainfall. We did get some rainfall recently on the west side of town of Arizona. I'm not sure if we got on the east side. You can see over here. Mount Theodore Roosevelt Dam. Over here. Talks about Arizona statehood. And there's one more over here. This is the Apache Trail. In general, here we are, Superstition Mountain Museum. If you look here, you got some actual stone from the Roosevelt Dam. So these are actual blocks cut from the Roosevelt Dam. Here is also a miniature of the mountains. Here's interesting, it's got that sundial on it I've never seen before. I've also never seen one like this with the this type of bird. In the back you can see some, uh, it looks like flint napped uh, arrowheads and up here is some beads. Again, if you look, hot will come lava rock grinds, and I've never seen anything like that one. Here's the male and female fear rules. There's Navajo rug loom. We've lost these back in New Mexico. You can see how it starts at the bottom and then works its way up towards the top. If you look here, these are going to be anisaws and petroglyphs. These are going to be found by, uh, this is Les Harris Sr. You can see up here, 80, 550 to 750. You can see the same lizard marking we see in a lot of places like the white tanks. And this one may look like a snake. It's kind of hard to tell. Second variation of barbed wire we've seen. We saw this at the de Desert Caballeros Museum as well. I haven't seen the Third from the bottom before, some of these ones look more complicated. There's an 1800s precision fouling piece. You can see the rifle on full. This is an 1860s, 1890s double barrel shotgun. 50 caliber Hawk and Muzz loader. And a 54 caliber percussion sharps rifle. If you look in here, it's some Conquistador gear. It's actually 
full chest plate, you can see the sword, and also the same helmet they were wearing. Pretty amazing. Here's a nice tribute to the Buffalo Soldiers of Arizona who fought in the Civil War. Uh, you can see right there, 10A. There's the actual outfit. That's an actually authentic, if you look closely, it's an authentic belt buckle, or at least a remake. Other than that, you can see some other information on African Americans who fought in the war. It's very important. These are the actual stones that are related to the Lost Dutchman uh, question and how, how people are trying to figure out. Here's the heart insert, and this actually inserts directly into the heart of Pierce's 184710. And you can see all the different designs on it. But you can see right here, this is the uh, things people, people think that this may be a mystery of how to get to the Lost Dutchman's uh, treasure. You can see right here's the heart, and the heart fits directly into this stone right here. It's very beautiful. Out in the Lost Dutchman Museum. Now let me tell you the story of Jacob Waltz, the Dutchman. Jacob Waltz was born near Oberswansdorf, Germany in 1810. He came to the U.S. of A. in 1839, worked in the Georgia Goldfields, then went to California with the 49ers. Jake became a U.S. citizen in 1866. He came to Arizona with the Walker Mining Party in 1863 during the Civil War where he prospected the superstition mountains. Old Jake died in 1891, leaving behind rich ore samples under his bed. Those maps on the wall behind you have been used by thousands of people looking for old Jake's mine. Now you study them real close, and just maybe you'll find it before I do. <laughs> All right, so let's take some photos of these maps. We'll have them all included in the archive, so okay. anybody looking for that? Several theories have been advanced as to the origin of the Dutchman's gold. It has been suggested that he hydrates the ore from the vulture mine, where he worked near Wickenburg. Vulture mine? It suggested that the same gold found in a rotted pack saddle near the massacre ground in the superstitions in 1963. Most speculate that he simply found one of the many mines in the Goldfield Mining District before anyone else did. To put these theories to rest, using the ore found from under the Dutchman's bed after he died, and specimens collected from all the suggested mines, a non-destructive test was conducted at a major university. The test reports really proved that to this date, the Dutchman's gold is from a totally unknown source. By the way, this beautiful cabinet was handcrafted in Chicago in 1894 and shipped to the very first Goldwater store in Prescott, Arizona. Wow, this was actually shipped to the very first Goldwater store in Prescott. So there we go again. Once again, connecting us back to Barry Goldwater. You can see how much the Lost Dutchman has become part of the local myth here. Uh, people have actually died looking for this uh, Lost Dutchman uh, mine and trying to find the gold. As on the video said, they still don't know where the actual gold that Dutch had. Uh, again, we'll visit his uh, grave and um, pay our respects to him like we did Barry, Barry Goldwater. So this is the Lost Dutchman, 100 years of tourism and commerce along the Apache Trail. So these are actually gonna be the Lost Dutchman, Jacob Waltz's actual mining tools found in his mining cache. And he, he actually had these and used these. So clearly he was a miner, whether the gold came from the mine or not, we guess we may or may not ever know.
All right, so we're gonna see a bunch of historical stuff right now. This is gonna be Apache land, I believe. And uh, there's gonna be movies that were filmed here. So the Arizona is a dry heat. You can see this guy's a bit of Skeletor over here. The Dutchman's Burrow Rides. Looks like we're down for the day. Clementary, Clement, Clementini, Fluent Bray spoken here. I don't know what that means. Oh, Fluent Donkey, I get it. Go to X and Jacob and Julia. Looks like we may have some animals here at some portions of the year. Let's ask the Dutchman for your free gold ring. That's about. So this over here is actually going to be the Elvis Preston Memorial Chapel. And this location is uh, was in one of his movies called Borrow. Out here. See the amphitheater. Superstition Mountain Stagecoach up here. And of course, here's going to be the Elvis Presley Memorial Church. Pretty beautiful. I wonder if it's even open. It says it's open, so let's go see if you can see inside of it. Got some more gear out there towards the road. Please be open. And it's open. So we are standing in the Elvis Preston Memorial Chapel. This is where uh, Barrow was filmed. You can see some of the, uh, the films he was in on the walls here. And of course you can see the uh, Elvis, Elvis himself behind me, of course. This is a pretty small chapel, really beautiful. This is one of the first locations I've tried to get inside and I actually got inside. So uh, it's a nice break from the cool, or it's a nice cool break from the heat, I should say, outside in uh, Arizona. But uh, we'll take a break and see what's got on TV here. It's like if you want, you can actually get a wedding done here. Unique Weddings and Ceremonies, AZ, Reverend James Corrigan and Sharon Corrigan. Non-denominational, so if you are uh, non-denominational, you look for a wedding at this nice, beautiful chapel. I think it's like 75 is the capacity. I would recommend it. This place is a beautiful place. It's got nice AC running, got quad fans, and uh, of course, Elvis Presley running the show. So this organ and stool is actually from 1849. Now, I don't see the stool, maybe it's pushed in, but this is a 1850-1849 uh, organ. This is gonna be extremely, extremely old here, we're talking about, inside the Elvis Memorial Chapel. All right, we're out here in the heat of Arizona at the Elvis Memorial Chapel, and I'm here to tell you to get out there and revisit some history. Charo, this is actually the film that you're gonna see Elvis in that uh, this actual building we're standing in was, was made in, so, or at least featured in, so uh, Charo is the film. All right, so now that we got the inside, let's go ahead and do a lap around the outside, see what this place looks like for real. As you can see from the front, very well managed. You can see the steeple up there. It still has a working bell you can even ring if you're getting married here. Cacti, like always. Looks like the windows are pretty nicely boarded up. We've got a metal roof on it now, tin roof. It's probably much more efficient. Good security. It's good for these kind of places. They need the good security to keep practice, you know, safe. This is, of course, protected. Trespassers. I don't know if this is storage or what. A nice stack of bricks over here. And then I'll walk around to the oppositional side of the building. We'll go a little bit out and see what this is, and then we'll go back around and get some photos and video of the building from the side. I'm trying to figure out what this thing is, though. It's got quite a bit of gear on it. It's got some rubber wheels on it, so it might actually be more contemporary than I'm thinking. I've got a newer trailer next to it, that's why I'm thinking that. But, you know, this is kind of see what the tire it says. It's still very hard to tell. It's hard to tell what this is from, or... Looks like some sort of crank. But this is going to be the church from the side. Let's get some photos. Those are the Superstition Mountains, the ones that claim so many lives. As we walk around, this place is actually a lot larger than I thought it was. Looks like you have like a little outhouse over here, currently out of order. Let's see if we can peek 
inside at least. Looks like it's actually near the ship. But... Oh my! There's a gentleman inside. Let's leave him alone. Hello! Look, camp four of the trading post. You can see here. This up here, property Jacob Walt. Let's go see what this is up here. Let's see, it doesn't look like you can get inside, kind of like the outhouse, but look like they had Jacob Waltz out of the outhouse even. Might be able to at least get a good peek inside. Looks like it's padlocked, but you can see. Yes, sir. We'll do that. Let's see. Dutch's. Right up here it says Memorial Ranch. This is going to be part of the general store. It's apparently part of it burned down during the actual shooting um, of film at Patchy Land. Please note you're entering 15 acres of rugged terrain with loose rocks. And we're not new to that, right? Not here at Revisiting History. Apparently you have some nice train set you can see over there that actually gets set up during it's a little bit cooler outside. Right now it's really hot. It's like 100 degrees out. Still got to get out there and see the history though. There's no temperature stop you completely. After Monument Hill, we've wrapped up some of the outdoor ones, but this one's not too terrible. So, Ooh. so something dart across there looked like a lizard to me. Hopefully I'm right. So they just said that they uh, saw some baby rattlers running around. I'll tell you. I don't want to get my first dose of a rattlesnake from a baby. I hear that they're quite a bit different of a, a bite. Can you see assay office? Let's just lay down here. It says to examine or analyze situations. So maybe like a uh, some mining company assay office. SMM Mill Office. You can go inside, can you? No, it's locked up. You can see they got some stuff inside as well. Primary sources. Ooh, a bird flew right over my head. Some more really, really old mining gear and equipment. Look at that sucker. Got nails hanging out of it. This looks like some heavy duty mining equipment. Yeah, here you can see some donated bricks. It's 28 days, the five. 1,000 mile round trips were required to disassemble and move this 20 stamp mill from the ghost town of Bland, New Mexico to Apache Junction. That's where we're at right now, mill operation schedule. This is a stamp mill? Not quite sure what we're stamping out here. We busted our butts, it says, to make this exhibit possible. It looks like it. Look at this thing, bull wheel. There it says, tappets, cams, shaft, feeder collar, stamp assembly. Boss, I don't even know how this works. You can kind of see how separate mechanisms look like they shift up and down, maybe. So the Cossack 20 stamp mill was constructed in Bland, New Mexico around 1914. So the crusher, jaw crusher was used to reduce large pieces of ore down to a size that the milk could process. The skip car, ore falls into the skip car. Feeder catches the dumped materials. The mortar box holds the ore. The stamp assembly. Uh, puts the components, crushing the ore into a mortar box, and the cyanide tank uh, leaches the precious metals into crushed ore. So we have a full process going on here, stamp assembly. It's pretty interesting. Don't want to from what I can see. Oh, okay, now I see. This is what's going on. So it'll be smashed here, brought up the ramp, and then brought down into the interior of the crusher. Various materials. Back here. Still gotta keep an eye out for these rattlers because they are around. I don't know where we're heading to now. Looks like we're at the back of this building. Looks like we take this motivation. Alright, let's put this away for a second. I'm on a kind of back path trail and I wanted to show this because this is the Superstition Mountains, man. They draw you in, but boy, do those steep cliffs look dangerous. So we got a nice little trail that takes us up through here, wraps around by. Not like close to superstition, but it wraps around the backside of the territory. You can see over here, that's going to be, I think you turn this and make the wheel go around for some sort of 
processing of materials is our rostra, the rostra, a mill comprising of a circular rock lined pit in which ore is broken or pulverized by stones. So, this would be a way of breaking ore up by an animal dragging the wheel, which then, of course, turns this, crushing the stones underneath. That's pretty interesting. You see the evolution of how this technology has worked. This looks like a giant um, uh, where you put the ore, ore to boil it down into pieces. I really hope this isn't like a uh, thing to go down the mine, like an elevator thing. Because I would not want to be on that. And then like last but not least we have the actual train carts which they load the ore into and those would take it all the way down to the chopper down there that we saw. You see it's a very simple um, hinge system that works this thing. And of course the tracks aren't particularly large but it's about the size of the tracks of the line. Looks like this is where you put the lower it down into what the mine would look like, but this is a one-man mine cage, so yeah, that looks like it might have been an actual elevator, but they would lower you down in one of these suckers. One-man mine cage. Doesn't seem particularly fun or exciting or safe, but sometimes you gotta break some eggs to make an omelet. snake alerts all over this place. This is Boot Hill apparently. This looks like a cemetery. I'm not sure exactly what we're seeing here. Him stiff at last. <laughs> Her cold as usual. Nice. It's, I got jokes. Got some comedians. Here lies Sheriff Jack. A first, a fast draw he did not lack. Got two bullets in the back. Here lies Big Nose Kate. Shot a fellow at her front gate, didn't pay the going in rate. Now, we actually sat at the same table as Big Nose Kate at the palace in Prescott. Realized bartender Bill sold rock cut from whiskey from homemade still, shot a fellow who didn't pay his bill. I think I don't think these are actual burial sites, but I could be wrong. Realized Cowboy Bob got drunk, lost his job, went to steal. He was hung by a mob. Seems to be a common occurrence at these times. Lester Moore, four slugs from four to four, no less, no more. Oof. And here lies Gambler Wade, drew a flush all of spades, lost to deuces and a razor blade. And some bones guys right here. I think it's supposed to make it look a little bit more uh, creepy. But you got the boots, you got the real boots lining throughout this place. Like boot. What did I say? 89. Boot Hill. 